Hello, my friends, here is Konstantin Shenikov Arkharov, and we're keeping our daily practice. Last time we talked about control function and conscious practice. If you missed it, episode, check it out here. Now it's time to talk about memory and how it works. Like attention, memory is a cognitive process and has a strong connection with where we direct our attention. We can remember much more if we focus on what we are hearing, seeing or doing. For instance, I'm always forgetting whether I closed my door or not. Uh, if I've closed it in autopilot mode, hurrying up and busy with unquiet thoughts, I can't remember if I've done it at all and I end up worrying about it. To prevent it, I have been pushing my control button by doing something unusual, something funny. I don't step, speaking out loud any funny verse, or... Then that takes cakes which the parsi man bakes makes dreadful mistakes. and turning the key. It brings me back to the present moment and when I ask myself later during the day, oh gosh, have I closed my door? I can remember the whole thing and relax. Yes, I've done it. That's how mnemonic devices works, but beyond that, memory is even more complex. We can divide it into two types by time factor – short-term or working memory, from some seconds till one minute long and long-term memory, from hours and days or even the rest of your life. At first, something enters into our short-term memory, but by repeating it over and over again, we can transfer it into long-term memory, still repeating to keep it there. It's how most people memorize quotations, songs or movement. It's easy and self-explanatory, but if you keep going, I'll show you a different perspective. We can also sort our memory by type of information. Visual – ability to remember and reproduce what we see. For instance, the view of our sheet music or of our moving hands and their targets. Oral – ability to remember and reproduce what we hear speeches, pieces of music or some special sounds, for musicians it's our main tool. Kinesthetic memory, or memory through movement, the ability to remember and repeat physical movement. Someone can call it a muscle memory, that's how our body remembers the movement, but it's obviously somewhere in the brain. Emotional memory, ability to remember the feelings. There are another types of memory, but it hardly can help in making music, so I omit it. All types of memory are not equally reliable. For example, kinesthetic memory is most unreliable. Its weakness lies in the fact that human beings are unable to repeat the exact same movement precisely. This is because each movement we make requires the coordination of many different muscles, each of which is varied by the smallest changes in position. Oral and visual memory are more reliable, but it depends on how we use it. For musicians, oral memory is a powerful tool and we can organize it according to musical subjects. Melodic memory – ability to remember a plot of melody line. Harmonic memory – ability to remember a logic of harmony. Structural memory – ability to recognize, understand and remember musical structure. There are several conditions to memorize in the best way possible. We have to memorize things consciously. We have to repeat it multiple times, again, again and again to keep it fresh in your mind. And most interestingly, we have to use different types of our memory and use it consciously. How to manage that? The more times that we repeat something, the more we lose our concentration and more unconsciously we do it. How can we repeat something many times without losing focus? Do not play the same way each time. Change anything. This reactivates your control. Uh -hmm. It seems to me I've told it you before. Mm. Ah, no, it was another episode, but the advice is the same. What do I mean? I'll show you now. Let's get started. Learning a piece, you have to deconstruct it first to understand how it works. Cut a piece and split the layers in there. Melody line. Bass line, accompaniment, counterpoint, second, third line, and so on. Learn each layer one after another. 
uh, pick a melody line or bass line and follow the steps, play it, then sing it, then try to play and sing it simultaneously or other way around. Repeat each step, but not more than five times. If you feel yourself going into autopilot, jump to the next step. And last secret tool is to use your imagination. Imagine how you play it, imagine all the details. Which finger you use for a certain note, how you touch it, release, how you change the fingering. Imagine all the movements and feelings. If you're able to imagine everything like that, you can play that. Then do the same with other layers. Try to combine it together, for instance. Bass and accompaniment, bass and counterpoint, melody and counterpoint. And then three layers together, for instance. Bass, melody and counterpoint, bass, melody and accompaniment, melody, accompaniment and counterpoints. Combining the layers, you can play one and sing another and then vice versa and play both. Beat by beat put everything together, playing the accompaniment. You can reduce the texture to a simple choral first and observe the rhythm of changing the harmonies, which can help you to understand and remember the structure. You can also sing it in different ways, following the voice leading like bass, tenor, alto or singing each chord from the bottom up. Following this way, you're helping yourself concentrate because of the novelty factor. You're always switching between new little targets inside one big goal and it forces you to do it consciously. Autopilot is deactivated. You're learning not only the piece, but how to control every moment and improve your attention. If you also check how it sounds through dynamics, phrasing, articulation, you're going to advance the settings of your control button and fine-tuning the connection between your ears, brain and muscles. You use different types of oral memory, concentrating on different layers and even different muscle memory while you play or sing. It's not necessary to do all these things in one day. Choose different ones every day to make it new. Afterwards, you will notice a huge difference between pieces learned by rope and those learned through conscious practice like this. You will notice much more flexibility and freedom. You will play each piece feeling as if you composed, improvised it or played by air. This and the improved attention with control will never let you down on stage and give you extra freedom and security. But it's another story. Stay tuned. Got it? Give it a try. And don't forget to practice. Thank mm-hmm. you.